reduces my stress, increases my testosterone levels, and these five extra points on my liver enzymes, no big deal. Vigorous Steve here. I want to make a quick video to give you guys my stance on the use of performance enhancing drugs as a whole, the way I look at it. And I'm sure many of the things I will discuss in this video could apply to the use of recreational drugs as well, which I certainly dabbled with in my younger years, but those days are far behind me already. So for the sake of this YouTube channel, we'll just focus on performance enhancing drugs. That's what um, I think most of you guys are here for anyway. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. The way I look at the use of performance enhancing drugs is as follows. I don't think PEDs are inherently good or bad. I look at compound XYZ, whether its use is worth it or not. And for me to make an accurate assessment whether a compound is worth it or not, I need to do a ton of research and keep a ton of different things into consideration. Can I source this compound locally or do I need to order this internationally and ship it by post? What is the cost? What are going to be the potential benefits and the potential side effects for those benefits? Are those dose dependent? Are those short-term side effects, long-term side effects? How is it going to change my blood work? And do those side effects only manifest in a very small percentage of the people that use this particular compound? Now, are these side effects very, very severe? albeit rare and very unlikely, or these severe to the point I'm risking organ failure, right? All these things I have to keep into consideration before I decide to take a particular pharmacological intervention to extend my bodybuilding or fitness journey. PEDs are not inherently good or bad. It's not a yes or no. It's not a Rotten Tomatoes movie review where a movie is either good or bad and you get some sort of aggregation score. There's a ton of th different things you have to look at before you decide to take a particular drug. You can reverse engineer this and go by goals. Let's say you have particular goals. You want to grow muscle tissue and you want to lose fat at the same time. All right, dissect what you want to use to reach those goals and then make the accurate decision on which drugs you're going to use. So you have a particular goal. Maybe you're interested in drugs a, B, C, D, right? Four different compounds that you'll have to research. You'll research these drugs each separately. Then ideally you research the drug interactions between these four different compounds. Then you see what potential side effects might manifest, which ancillaries you might need to mitigate or reduce those side effects. Are those side effects short-term, long-term? All these things you have to look into. And then it's a matter of sourcing, right? If you feel that these four compounds are going to be worth it, then you still need to be able to source those. There's a lot of compounds I consider worth it, but I can't source them, making it a little bit difficult to use them. So those are automatically off the list. If you can't source a particular compound, no matter how good or worth it they are, you're not going to use them because you can't acquire them. So now maybe you're left with a second option, not your first option, but you have a second option with potential side effects that might still be worth it, albeit you can mitigate these side effects. But because your first option is not available, you're left with a section option, which might be worse for your health or might be di more difficult to control the side effects thereof. But that's the only option you have, right? So of all the performance enhancing drugs that we can choose, there's only going to be a very short short list of the ones that are actually worth it for you. Right? We already discussed the my short short list of Test Primo, Anavar, GH, IGF-1, insulin, and a few ancillaries. And then there's a couple of things I would like to experiment with in the future, um, which I do like to experiment with performance enhancing drugs to figure out if there's more compounds out there that I can add to my worth it list. Now, my worth it might not be your worth it. That's why you, as an individual, always have to make your own list of which compounds are worth it to you and which compounds are not worth it, right? Finances is always a huge issue. So for me, 5-amino-1-MQ, liraglutide, MOT-C, for example, or primabolin, those are all reasonably expensive compounds. But all things considering, all the research that I've done, um, all the experimentation that I've undergone and everybody that I've talked to over the years, and I've talked to a lot of people in this fitness space, either through coaching consultations or people who we all perceive to be experts. I've talked to a lot of people, and in my opinion, 
putting all of that together, all of my knowledge together, these compounds are worth it for me at any cost. I would pay double and still use them, but maybe that's just for me and not for you. Right? Maybe 5 amino 1 MQ is too expensive for you. Maybe primobolin is too expensive for you. You need to look into another compound as an alternative. So from all of the anabolic androgenic steroids, all of these selective androgen receptor modulators, all of the peptides, whether those are anabolic peptides or healing peptides or anti-aging peptides or ancillaries, which, well, you can classify into a million different things, right? The blood pressure medications and the libido enhancers and the selective estrogen receptor modulators and the aromatized inhibitors and the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and the D-peptidyl peptidase type 4 inhibitors. Man, there's a million different ancillaries and compounds out there, but you don't need to use all of them. You don't need to use any of them. And you could just stick to the ones which are worth it to you, right? But for that, you need to do some research. Now, you might have heard that the compound XYZ is very beneficial. You should always use this compound. This is the best angiotensin receptor blocker in existence. Or this is the best aromatized inhibitor in existence. Or you should never use an aromatized inhibitor. It's this dogma that is bad, not the performance enhancing drugs that we can choose from. Because every ancillary, every PED, and everything else we take for the sake of bodybuilding has potential side effects. And it's up to you to research which potential side effects are worth it or not. Tilmasartan, hyperkalemia. Is that worth it? It's a very rare occurrence, but it can manifest, right? Is this hyperkalemia leading to cardiac events worth it? You probably didn't know about this. Or severe liver toxicity of Tilmasartan, a very rare occurrence, but it can happen. Nabivalol, hyperkalemia. You combine nabivalol with telomersartan, you increase the risk for hyperkalemia, albeit very, very, very rare and unlikely, you're still increasing the risk. Or ashwagandha root extract, a very hot topic nowadays. Acute liver failure, very, very rare. If you go to livertox.com, you'll find instances that people get acute liver failure from ashwagandha root extract. Is it so severe that they need to pull ashwagandha root extract off the market? No, they don't do that with green tea extract either. It's also been linked to acute liver failure. Or Garcinia cambogia, a supplement that inhibits fat absorption in the intestinal tract, also linked to acute liver failure. And when you really dig, dig down deep into it, many things have been associated with acute liver failure as well as cancer formation. So it really depends on how far of a deep dive you want to do in a particular compound that you're researching, you'll have to decide whether that compound is worth it or not, because this very unlikely yet severe side effect might manifest in a 0.1% chance for you, similar chance to somebody else. But if it doesn't manifest and you only get benefits or maybe a slight raising of the liver enzymes, which is in many cases completely benign, especially considering all its potential benefits, Right, then you outweigh both scenarios and you decide, well, actually, this ashwagandha root extract is actually worth taking because it lowers my cortisol, reduces my stress, increases my testosterone levels, and these five extra points on my liver enzymes, no big fucking deal. Look at the total picture and then decide for yourself whether a compound is worth it or not. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing for last... 12 years or so that I've been experimenting with performance enhancing drugs, I would do my time and due diligence to research each compound separately, look into drug interactions, look into how this compound could overlap into my diet, my training, and everything else that I was doing at the time, then make a calculated assessment whether I wanted to take this compound or not, did my blood work before, perhaps during, and after, and then after I have the data, and I have all my personalized experience, all this acquired knowledge with this compound, comparing the medical literature to my anecdotal and personal experience, turning all of this into knowledge. And then I make a calculated assessment whether this compound is worth it or not. I'm not going to say that this is bad or this is the best. I'll close off this video with a very relatable example being the trim bologna sandwich. I'm sure many of you guys have heard about the trim bologna sandwich or experienced the trim bologna sandwich yourself. There's a very small percentage of people out there who get no mood changes from trim bologna. They get maybe the other side effects like night sweats, for example, 
or um, gastrointestinal upset, right? Acid reflux. There's a ton of different side effects we could manifest with trimbolone. For me, I could tolerate all of the side effects, the night sweats and the acid reflux and uh, the mood changes, but my wife couldn't tolerate my mood changes. I was intolerable. I was a little bit too aggressive and irritable to the point she was not really enjoying our relationship. So on her request, I stopped the trimbolone sandwich. All right, guys, I'm going to close off this video because it started raining. So I don't want to bore you guys with all this rain sound in the background. You know where to find me for the ebooks. You know where to find me for the consultations. Thank you guys so much for watching. A front double bicep for the vigorous crew. No trimbolone sandwich in these cannons because, well, on my wife's request, I removed it from the short list into the not worth it list. I could tolerate the side effects of trimbolone, but I was intolerable as a person. So it's now on the not worth it list. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.